Hi, everybody. I want everybody tonight to practice smiling while I'm up here, okay? <laughs> you know why? You ever heard of the three-minute smile? In therapy, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. If you are just, ugh, and you're mad or upset or something, and you make yourself smile for three minutes, you all ever notice that, Haven, I'm smiling all the time? You know why? <laughs> There's a reason. I'm creating some endorphins and dopamine and all that stuff in my brain. Like, sometimes we got to do it for ourselves because our environment isn't going to do it for us, right? So I want to see lots of smiles tonight, lots of them, because we need them. Same thing with what? Laughing. laughing. Oh, it's good for our soul, isn't it? Laughing is so good for our souls. Tober and I, we, we try to laugh every night before we go to bed. We send each other funny videos. And you, you, you want to know something else? My daughter, when she was a baby, I could not figure out how to get this child to sleep. I could not fit it out. And one night I just tickled her and she laughed and laughed till she was crying. She was laughing so hard. She was a baby. That kid knocked right out. So every night before she went to bed, you know what we did? We had tickle time. And it worked. There was just something that gets released that needs is an energy that needs to be released. And there are ways that we can go about doing it. And we do it all the time. We lay in bed and we watch TikTok videos. We watch YouTube videos. Just stuff that makes us laugh. And, and it helps, right? And we need all the dang help we can get, right? I know I do. So been a day huh been a day i'll tell you my day has not gone as planned my day was to be off today my day was gonna be to clean my house get some things done and feel productive and i was on the phone all morning all morning with things that needed to be taken care of feels like it's been a day where things that just hasn't felt right i don't know and i'm having I guess that it's not just me, okay? Having a guess, there's more happening. And because like what he said, we're all one. We can all feel things, right? We all collectively can feel things. I can feel your energy when you walk in the room, you can feel mine. And so what happens when collectively, what if we're all just, what happens? We're all gonna feel it, right? We're all gonna react and we're all gonna respond. And and it's super important to know, and I talk individually with a lot of ladies about this. Women, what I have found is people in addiction tend to feel a little bit more than normal people. They tend to be a little bit more tuned in. And I don't know why that is. I really don't. All I know is I see it over and over and over again. And I know for myself, I felt everybody in the room and I didn't know what to do with it. So I hid, I ran away. I, I, I smothered it up, I covered it up, I went and got drunk, right? And that helped me not have so much intensity because my emotions are very intense. So I learned how to cover it up at a very young age. And my guess is most of us in this room can identify with that, right? And, and so it can feel like a curse when we don't know what to do with those emotions and do with, I mean, I have a hard time dealing with my own. And then I got all of y'all's to deal with, and then we got families to deal with. We got children to deal with. We got all sorts of energies to deal with, right? All sorts of people and all their stuff. It can be a lot and it can feel like a curse. However, in the spiritual realm, if you can learn to identify it and learn what to do with it, it can be a blessing. Because if I walk in a room and I feel your energy and I feel what's going on with you, chances are I'm going to be able to tune into that and help you right? A whole lot quicker than trying to identify it. So <clears throat> getting there though is, is, is a big journey to get to that place. So I say all that um, is not in my, in my plan of talking tonight, but I, I feel like it's worth talking about because it's a real thing and we don't talk about it enough. I was reading earlier about uh, the, the the scripture is about that these people who are Christians have, I don't even remember which scripture it is now, and I marked it, and then I forgot it at home. So, but how we grow up in, in Christians, and we were, get far along, but it talks about we're still drinking milk. Like, we, we, we get far along, but we don't do anything with our spirituality. 
we don't do anything in our walk and, and we're still drinking milk like an infant. And we got to get to a place where we grow up, where we start doing something with it, where we learn how to live spiritually. We learn how to practice principles in our spiritual lives. And that's our hope coming in here every Monday is, is teaching that because I didn't, I needed to learn that myself. And I learned it through a, lots of therapy, through lots of different ministries and lots of, and I'm still learning. I'm not done by any means. However, when we can learn to apply it, we're not infants in our spirituality anymore, right? And, and so that's our hope coming in, this, in here is learning how to practically apply these spiritual principles we talk about. And that's what the 12 steps have done for me is they have helped me learn how I can apply these, this spirituality in my life, how I can learn to tap into it, how I can learn to feel these things and do something different. Because what I've always done hasn't necessarily worked. So, um, so, um, super important. Like I can get all this knowledge and I can, I can go become a super Christian, right? I can go into church and I can go learn all the prayers and I can learn a lot of different things. But if I don't apply these principles in my life, what good is it? I'm still an infant in my maturity, okay? So speaking of being an infant in my maturity, I'm going to share a little story. And my husband's been asking me all day about what I'm going to be talking about tonight. And I told him I'm, I'm not telling him because he doesn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so when Tolbert and I started talking over the phone, we, we started throwing things at each other, like, and we called them deal breakers, like, you know, we started getting to know each other. We'd spend three or four hours a night talking on the phone. And, you know, we got a connection really fast. And, and so we started talking about the idea of, you know, getting together and meeting up and all this stuff and maybe seeing about taking that relationship a little bit further. And so I was, I was a little standoffish about that. I'm like, no, let me, let me give you a deal breaker. You know, let me tell you something about myself that will push you away. And he'd be like, all right. And I'd tell him, he's like, that's not a deal breaker. He was like, let me give you one. And he'd give me one. And isn't that opposite of what we typically do? When we go date somebody, we put on our best face and our best clothes, and we're there to impress, and we're putting every, you know, we're, we're getting, we're showing everything good about ourselves. We're bragging on ourselves. We're telling everything good. And then what happens is you get serious in that relationship, and then you get married, you're like, who the heck did I just marry? Because that is not the person that I married. Y'all been there, done that? I've been there, done that, and it's terrible, terrible. So I was like, I'm not doing that again. I'm going to lay it all out there. I'm going to tell him everything ugly about myself, everything. So I did, and he did, and we just went back. Well, let me tell you my deal breaker. No, let me tell you mine. And we really tried to, to push each other away. And at the end of the day, it came down to this. He told me flat out, the only deal breaker is if I'm a man and I have a heart. <laughs> that is not going to work. <laughs> He For didn't sure. say it that nicely. <laughs> Man parts. Man parts. Man yeah, parts. Yeah, one of those is a deal breaker. <laughs> so that became my deal breaker too. If you don't have a man part, that's a deal breaker. <laughs> like we're not going down there, okay? <laughs> well done. We're going to be real here, right? So we threw all these big deal breakers out the window and out the door and to each other and really tried to make them stick. Well, there was one thing that we did not talk about. One thing. And it is, you know, we talk lots about man parts, but we did not talk about, we did not talk about one thing that is our biggest squabble today. Y'all, can y'all guess what it is? Keep guessing. Oh. Hangers. Sorry. Tolbert never told me he was a hanger whore. Okay. I am. And this is a real thing. This is a real thing. Let me tell y'all, I don't spend a lot of money on clothes. I don't prefer them to be given to me. And if I, they're not given to me, I'm going to go to the thrift store and go buy them. I'm not going to spend money on clothes. But you know what I will spend money on? Hangers. Hangers. <laughs> Good hangers. So before we got married, I spent $100 on hangers, y'all. I did. I would never spend a hundred dollars on clothes, but I will spend a hundred dollars on hangers. Why? Because they matter to me. <laughs> clothes don't matter to me, but hangers matter to me. True story. True story. 
We all got our things, right? We all got our things. So Tolbert entered into the marriage, and he did not have the kind of hangers that I had. <laughs> and Tolbert proceeded to steal one damn hangers. I did. <laughs> She's got I, nice hangers. I have nice. I have nice clothes. She's got nice hangers. So I started noticing my hangers are gone, and I'm like, "What's going on here?" Daughter, he's like, "They're nice hangers." I'm like, "I know, but they're the only ones." I got. And so they all end up in his closet, hanging up on his clothes, driving me. I want my hangers back, right? I want my dang hangers. I even went so far, y'all. Did y'all know that Tractor Supply? Blows their hangers away. So nice I was thing. a tractor supply and they're pretty nice hangers. I said, hey, can I have those hangers y'all throwing away? So I went and grabbed like 200 hangers <laughs> from tractor to supply so that we could have some hangers so I could get my hangers back. They're still not as nice as your hangers. <laughs> <laughs> so I go the other day to go do laundry. And I'm getting my hangers out and there's a whole stash of my hangers hidden in his part of the closet. Totally. Totally. I caught you too. Those were. Yeah. So then he tells me, why are you stealing my hangers? <laughs> I knew you got those out of there. I knew it. Why'd you steal my your hangers? <laughs> what is the point of all this? It's not the big things. It's the little things. What little things are eating your lunch right now? Because they will. They will. And so in that, I have a choice. Are my hangers more important? Are they a deal breaker? <laughs> they are my hangers, let me tell you. They are nice. So... Are they yummy? They are not, but they're the water. They're they're metal up here, and then they come down and like this, really and bright. they have like the little thingies on them, and they're thick, and they're not the ones you get at Walmart. I, Y'all, I really put some thought and energy into my hangers, so. But that's irrelevant. The whole point of this story was to talk about these little things that can can really hurt us, right? That can really that can really bring us down and that can build the deal breakers. Thankfully, it's not a deal breaker, okay? Right. It's not. I am willing to share my hangers. And if I have to buy some more hangers, I will. I will even average. replace all of the tractor supply hangers. If y'all need hangers, by the way, we got <laughs> <laughs> Because if they sell a shirt, they take their hangers off and they just throw them away. They don't reuse them. And they're really thick hangers because you got thick shirts and thick jackets. <laughs> they're not, so a lot of hangers, are th you break, or I do. These yeah. are thick, manly hangers. And they're plastic. Plastic and metal. So it's the, it's the little things that build up that are deal breakers for us, right? In life, in relationships, in everyday things, in jobs, in all sorts of things. And that's kind of where I want to go tonight is what things are in your way what things are blocking you what things are keeping you from having the freedom that you want and and i'm going to talk a little bit tonight about what's called a pain cycle and so with the pain cycle it kind of starts off with as an offense and then from there we react all right so what could be my pain in him taking my hangers? <laughs> there is no pain, right? Right. right. My, visit, my, my pain is just lack of control, right? I'm not controlling it. I'm, yeah, theft. Let's do that. <laughs> I've been stolen from y'all. I've been stolen from. And what is my reaction? I want I want to take those back. I want to fight, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna get angry. Oh yes. Come on, it's a hanger. Really? <laughs> 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 
I know. Violated. I like that. It's a hanger. <laughs> I got nice clothes. <laughs> he does have nicer clothes than I do. So if 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 he offends me and he steals my hangers from me, and this is my reaction, I get angry, disrespectful. I, I, I disres I feel disrespected. I feel violated. What is what are the chances? How am I going to react? This is my reaction. What? How am I going to treat him now? Ooey. Ooey. What is that? I'm I'm probably going to yell, right? I'm going to yell, argue. I'm going to steal my hangers. I'm going to go back to theft. <laughs> How is that going to make him feel? Resentment. Um, yep. So there's going to be, I'm going to probably distance myself from him, right? So all of this is happening to him. So this happens to me. I react. My reaction is going to give him an offense and him a pain, right? Um, then what's gonna what's he how is he gonna react? What's his reaction gonna be? Pout. He's probably gonna pout. Okay. That's, pout, that, pout. That's guaranteed. That's guaranteed. Yeah. yeah that's guaranteed. He's what? He's gonna steal him back? <laughs> Jealousy. What else? Doesn't stop, does it? So then what's he going to do? He's going to come back, and he's probably going to do even more pain to me, right? Now he's going to in compound that to yelling, arguing. Well, I just end up doing the laundry and giving you the crappy hang. <laughs> Which means i got to do the laundry now, you know, because I don't want him to give me the crappy hangers. That's true. I do do the laundry mm -hmm. to give her the bad hangers. But can y'all see how this could just get vicious? Mm-hmm. <gasps> Can y'all see how this can get vicious really fast? Really, really fast. So let's let's just break that down to even more. I mean, it can be something petty. Petty, 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 petty. Um, well, and they kind of are, and that's why I'm using them as an example, because it is petty. Yeah. It is. And and quite honestly, we don't fight about it. We kind of we joke about it. We do squabble a little bit here and there. Um, and we, we just, do the laundry. Yeah. And we just steal the hangers back and forth, honestly. So um, it's whoever gets to them first and whoever finds them. Um, absolutely. The little stuff eats our lunch. And so what's another little thing that turned into something really big? I know. I know. I know. That bus is going back and forth. Yeah. So. Um, wow. Our tone and the way we speak, that can mean everything, right? So, I'm just going to throw you under the Do bus it. here. So, <laughs> so uh, we were about to go somewhere, and he had some shoes that he had bought, and he, I didn't know that he had gone and bought them, and the empty shoe boxes were in the garage, and then so I don't find out about, about it till the next day, when we're about to leave somewhere, and I was like, you got more shoes? Why would you get more shoes? I don't understand why you need more shoes. And what did you hear? Uh, I'm a 58-year-old man. I can buy my own damn shoes if I want to. I'm a grown woman. Oh. Isn't that true? That's true, though, isn't it? So what he heard was a nagging wife. But what would cause me to even say something to begin with? What was my pain? I didn't know. I didn't know, right? I was out of the know, which m took me to a place of, well, definitely control issues, what else? but, right, right, insecurity, insecurity. It blew up. I mean, yeah. But, but this goes back to, to previous relationship where I've had a previous relationship who hid stuff like that from me. Okay, y'all follow me? So my, so my reaction was to nag him. His, how did he take that? Angry, Angry. he's a grown-ass man. Defensive. Defensive, that's it. So when he does that to me, what do I do? Well, mm, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. 
So when he gets angry and defensive, now he's like, well, screw it. I'm not going anywhere with y'all. So there's a little retaliation. Y'all see how this can blow up real fast? Over a pair of shoes, right? He's more important to me than a pair of shoes. I'm more important to him than a pair of shoes. He's more important to me than a hanger. Sort of. So, <laughs> no, he really is. He's more important to me. He can have all my hangers, honestly. Um, but do you see how these little things can, we can feed off of each other's pain cycles? Because my, the, my stuff is out of the no wasn't because he bought a pair of shoes. He's, he is a grown man. He can buy a pair of shoes. It came from previous hurts of having these insecurities and not being in control and not being in the know, thinking there must be something more going on, right? There's got to be something more. So then I nag at him. I come across with a tone that's not nice, which goes back to his old wounds and his old stuff that he's dealt with before. And he comes back with, how dare you talk to me that way? And we are in a vicious cycle. So the question is, knowing what your offenses are, what your pains are, what triggers your heart in pain. Because my insecurity is a big one. Betrayal is a big one. Um, not being heard. If I don't feel like I'm heard, that's a deep, deep wound that goes way back, right? And so part of me, when I did nag, guess what I didn't feel? I didn't feel heard. I didn't feel like he was, but all he heard was rah, 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 rah. And I was trying to say something, but I didn't know, I didn't say it right. You'll see how, how these deep-seated things can really blow up really fast. And it's not even about what's happening on the surface. It's about what has happened before, about what is deep within us. So understanding what our pain cycle is, is very it's a very big step in helping to be aware of it and to do something different with it. So when I step back from this, this cycle and said, man, I didn't feel heard. And I go to him, I say, you know what? It wasn't about the shoes. It was that I didn't feel heard and I didn't feel trusted. That you could, I felt like you hid those from me. And if you're going to hide those from me, that gives me some insecurity and distance in this relationship. And I don't know what to do with that. There's a big difference between that and the way I handled it, right? So being aware, and we talk about this over and over and over in this meeting, being aware is the first step in anything that I do to changing anything. And so super, super important, knowing what triggers me. I hear every week, daily, this triggered me, good, good. Because if it's triggering you, you can identify it and you can start to do something and work through it. I want you guys to be triggered. I want you guys to be stirring these things up. I want these emotions to be going. Why? Because you can work through it instead of doing what we've always done. If we do what we've always done, we're going to get what we've always got. So the challenge in being triggered in something, being upset with something, is learning a new way to work through it. Does that make sense? All right. So, um, so ideally, if, I, if something is triggered in my pain cycle and I'm reacting my, instead of blowing up on him and going to him, my next step should be finding um, <clears throat> the truth. So again, my truth is I'm insecure and I've got issues I got to deal with. So what's the truth? Is he responsible for my security? Is he responsible for the things in my past? He's not responsible for the way I react, but I sure can blame him, right? It's your fault. You had those dang shoes. So um, it's me. It's always me. It's me, not them ever. So if it's me and my truth is that I've struggled with this stuff probably my whole life, um, I've got to find a new way to deal with it. So if I start saying, okay, he loves me no matter what. Yeah. What? No, this is stuff he and I are working through. Oh, how about that? <laughs> no, yeah. So, so, <laughs> yeah. what do you know? What are you doing? So, so, but when I step back and I, I, I step back from this emotion and this pain, it's true. I look at the truth. What I just said a second ago, he loves me, right? He loves me. That's the truth. The lie, the lie is he doesn't because he hid those dang shoes. He doesn't love me. He steals my hangers. He doesn't love me, right? Um, 
<laughs> um, so if I start to look at my truth, how am I going to react? If I'm standing in the truth, man, I know he loves me. How am I going to react? I'm going to go to him in the first place and be like, man, I'm, you know, I still feel this way, but I'm probably not going to nag him, holler at him, reject him, treat him like a child. Y'all follow me? He's but, so but if you say, when you did this, I felt it. How many of y'all have heard that before? When you do this, <laughs> I feel this. When you... Up the shoes. <laughs> I feel. The best and simplest formula on the planet. On the planet. It works every single time. And I don't usually get there in the beginning. Usually I have to get to here to go through the pain cycle a little bit and then to step back and go, you know what? I don't like the way this feels. I don't like where I am. I don't like how I've reacted. I don't like that I did this. So I'm going to take responsibility for my feelings, right? I'm going to take it. This is something that goes way back something I need to work through and he can't fix it, right? Makes a big difference. So with that being said, this is where I was really wanting to go tonight. This is just kind of the prelude is what's in our control and what's out of our control. You know, I ever sat back and thought about that? I need, I need like three boards. Um, have y'all seen the circles? about what's in our control and what's out of our control. So in my life, this is what's in my control and what's outside of my control. So what's out, what's outside of my control? What? The weather, people. other people for sure. Right. Their thoughts, the past, that's a good one. Okay. For, men, for sure. We don't even want to, yeah. Yeah? Did it work? What else is out of my control? Huh? Time. Oh, that's a good one. Other people? Huh? What can I control? Emotions, thoughts, actions. How about boundaries? Goals? Response. Catch it, check it, change it. Thank you, Jody. This time, the first time it was Jody. Oh. How about, can I control who I spend time with? I can control who I listen to. Ooh. How about what I hear? What I'm willing to hear? Uh huh. What I say. How about what I speak to myself? Really? No. Me and you. My, so I heard believe. I can, I, my beliefs. Emotions? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Gigi just hit on something. <clears throat> that is right. Because, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, have you ever felt something you didn't want to feel? Yeah. Which is out of your control, right? But what Gigi just said was perfect, but how I express them is a different thing, right? Um... How about how I handle my cha how I handle challenges? That's something I can control, right? I'm running out of room here, guys. Control. 
Not a whole lot more. Gold? Yep. And then my focus. People, places, and things. Who, I think I put that in there. Who I, who I spend time with. Super important. My environment, where I'm at, where I choose to be is super, super important. Who I choose to listen to, super important. Focus, awareness. Yes. So there are some things I can control. Can I control you? Cannot control you. Can I control Tolbert? He's a grown ass man. <laughs> 58. He's a 58 year old man. But, but think about this, ladies. I got a whole room full of ladies in here. So I'm going to just pick on you for a second. Sorry, JJ. Um, how many of us have been in a relationship and really loved everything about our guy? Like, oh, he hung the moon. He's amazing. And we get together and it's like, oh, you're not doing that right. Oh, you're not doing that right. Oh, you need to get better at this. What do we sound like? <laughs> Nags, we sound like mothers. They don't want to be mothered, right? But when we first get together, we don't do that. Why do we do it as time goes on? Because of our pain cycle. <laughs> it's because of our pain cycle, right? Why is that? So we have a sense of control. Because if I have a sense of control around my environment, I feel better, right? So with that, I'm going to just throw him under the bus again. Damn. So, um, yep, he's, Damn. I'm going to get him a shirt with tire marks on the back. No kidding. <laughs> sure. I can say in my past, I have not been good at this because I've done exactly what I've just told you guys. Get with somebody and now you're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. You got to do this. You got to do that. And typically, anybody we live with, we're going to do these things. Imagine how much y'all do it to each other. You're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. You got to get this together. You got to do that. Right? We can go on and on and on. But these are very real things. Like we, you know, I loved Tolbert's talk last week. And if you guys had, weren't here last week, please listen to it. it. It was so good. And, you know, he... We talk all the time, like I paint these big, broad strokes and he comes back in with these little fine details. He's a, he's a painter of little fine details. I'm a big, big picture kind of person and he, he wraps it all up and brings it all in. And I, I love that, absolutely love it. But what if I tried to make him paint the broad strokes? It wouldn't work. What if he tried to make me paint all the little tiny, tiny details? It wouldn't work, right? And, and, and how... How does that apply in our lives? What are we doing with the people in our lives? Are we expecting them to paint the teeny tiny details when they're a broad stroke person? Are we expecting them to do it our way? I don't want another version of me. I want him. I want a man. I don't, I, and, and if he were a version of me, I'd be a deal breaker, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I have, to remember, I have to remember the truth, the truth. The truth is he is who he is, and I, I don't want to change him. I love him exactly the way he is. Same way um, I have a job managing a lot of things, a lot of details, a lot of people. But at the end of the day, do I have any control over any of them? I don't. Now, I can give consequences, and I can give, I can give the things that I can give or do the things I can do, but at the end of the day, everybody was given what? choice, which is free will. Every single one of us. And you know what? God gave us that. He gave us free will. He gave every single one of us free will. Who am I to take that away from anybody? Who am I to take that away from his meat hands, right? He's allowed to have them if he wants them. He just can't touch me with them. So, so I have a lot of things that I can control but other people are not one of them. They're just not. People are gonna mess up. And a, and a lot of times, I, I'm the problem solver, right? That's kind of my job title. I gotta solve problems. But sometimes it's not, there are things I can do, but a lot of times, it'll work itself out. A lot of times there's a lesson to be learned. A lot of times, it needs, it needs some people, everybody, all of us need to learn these lessons of working through it a different way 
instead of doing what they always did, getting what they always got, okay? Because I used to be one to nag and gripe. I can get into that real easy because it's my old pattern and my old way of life. What good does it do, though? All it does is cause division. I don't want division. I want unity. I want us to be together. So I've got to do something different, which is when you touch raw meat, it freaks me out. And you ain't touching me, okay? <laughs> right? I, when you do this, I feel this. And it is, I'm, I mean, I know I say it over and over and over again, but when you guys put this into practice in your life, it is amazing the changes it makes, right? People are not going to do things your way. They're not going to do it my way. I try. Believe me, I try. And so when it doesn't happen, it's my job to say, hey, when you don't listen to me, I feel disrespected or I feel discounted or disqualified or I feel like what I'm saying doesn't matter to you. Right. And then I, I let it be. I'm done. Because why? It's outside of my control. Um, some of the other things that are outside of my control is the future. Um, how others take care of themselves. So other people, how they take care of themselves, how they act, what other people think of me. That's a big one. We all fight tooth and nail to try to get people to think better of us, don't we? I can't control that. I can't, but what I can do is stand in my integrity, right? I can stand in my integrity and stand in the truth and let people think whatever they're going to think. Because at the end of the day, it's out of my control. I can't control what happens around me. I can't control the opinions of others. I can't control the actions of others. I can't. I can't control where my resentments will lead me talk a lot about resentments in here, right? I can't control where they will lead me. We like to think we can. I got this. I'm not going to let this resentment fester. I'm not going to let this resentment take me back out. I'm not going to let this resentment do me in, but I don't have any control over that. And so guys, being in a room full of recovery, we have to remember that because it's, it's life or death for us. Resentments will lead us back out. And if I'm, if I'm the cause of someone's pain cycle, and I'm the cause of someone being in their pain and causing resentments in them, in them, there's no guarantees where that resentment can take them. So I have to be very careful, right, with my actions and my boundaries and all the things that I can control. Because I can choose one thing. One thing I can control is how I love. I can control if I'm going to love or not, right? I'm going to control how I love. I'm going to control how I build into you. I'm going to control those things because those are the things at the end of the day that matter. These things that divide us, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy? So if that's happening, who's in the middle of it all? Guys, the enemy is the enemy, not you, right? Not other people, not the people that we're mad at, not the people that cause us harm. So, you know, if we can take our focus off of, he's not my enemy, even if he steals my hangers, right? He's not. So um, with that in mind, some of the things that we can practically do is pay attention to what we're aware of. Pay attention to what our focus is on. Because if my focus is on you and how you're acting and what you're doing and how you're not doing it or whatever it is, is that the, is that the right place? Where should my attention be? On me and how I'm loving and giving and all of those things. Because that's the only thing at the end of the day that I can do anything about, right? So pay attention. Be aware. And I hope I haven't touched my face because my fingers are black. Um, and don't mess with my hangers. So let's wrap it up.